To fill a small cup, we open the faucet only a little, while for a large container, we open it completely. This simple action represents controlling the flow rate, in other words, adjusting the faucet's K factor. In this video, we'll explain what the K factor is and how it affects hydraulic calculations and overall performance in sprinkler systems. The discharge flow rate of a sprinkler is proportional to the square root of its operating pressure. The proportionality constant that converts this relationship into a usable equation is called the k-factor. The k-factor can be obtained using the formula k equals 29.84 cd squared, where d is the sprinkler orifice diameter in inches, and c is the discharge coefficient, the product of the coefficient of contraction and the coefficient of velocity. The coefficient of contraction varies with the design and manufacturing quality of the sprinkler orifice. The coefficient of velocity depends on factors such as friction between water and the internal surfaces of the sprinkler head or orifice and turbulence within the sprinkler. Therefore, in theory, flow rate can influence the coefficient of velocity and thus the K factor. However, in fire sprinkler systems, where the flow regime is highly turbulent, this influence is negligible. For hydraulic design, we treat the K factor as constant, determined solely by the sprinkler's physical characteristics, such as orifice size and manufacturing precision. In imperial units, the K factor is expressed as gallons per minute per square root of PSI. In metric, it's liters per minute per square root of bar. An FPA 13 outlines the acceptable K factors for sprinklers in Table 7221, and sprinkler manufacturers are required to comply with these specifications. Choosing sprinklers with the appropriate K factor is one of the most important aspects of system design. In some cases, selection is guided by NFPA 13 requirements, while in others, it's left to the designer's discretion to optimize hydraulic performance. NFPA 13 requirements regarding the K factor apply to both the installation and hydraulic calculation of fire sprinkler systems. From an installation perspective, the K factor influences several design elements, including the need for strainers, the configuration of alarm test connections, the requirement for return bends, and the allowable distance below the ceiling for early suppression fast response sprinklers. In hydraulic calculations, standard specifies the required K factor for CMDA sprinklers based on the design density. Additionally, in certain scenarios, such as encapsulated storage over 15 feet and up to 20 feet in height, or the protection of indoor storage of idle wood pallets, the standard outlines specific K factor requirements. For CMSA and ESFR sprinklers, NFPA 13 provides detailed tables listing both the K-factor and the minimum required pressure, which together help determine the minimum flow rate needed for each sprinkler. Although the requirements we've mentioned do not cover every detail, they serve to highlight the importance of the K-factor in designing fire sprinkler systems. The equation Q equals K square root of P is one of the most widely used formulas in hydraulic calculations for fire sprinkler systems. We apply it when we know the K factor and pressure to determine the flow rate, or when we know the K factor and flow rate to calculate the required pressure. It's also useful for simplifying system calculations by determining an equivalent K factor for a section of the sprinkler system. In the following sections of the video, we'll explore how to apply the equation to calculate flow rate, pressure, and the equivalent K factor.
In hydraulic calculations for fire sprinkler systems, we often encounter situations where the pressure and K factor of a sprinkler are known, and we need to determine the discharge flow rate. For example, if the pressure behind the sprinkler is 25 psi and the K factor is 8, we can apply the formula Q equals K times the square root of P to find the flow rate. In the initial step of hydraulic calculations for fire sprinkler systems using standard spray sprinklers, the flow rate of the most remote sprinkler is determined by multiplying the required density by the sprinkler's coverage area. By knowing the flow rate, we can calculate the required pressure by dividing it by the k-factor and squaring the result. For example, in a light hazard occupancy, if a pendant spray sprinkler with a k-factor of 5.6 covers 200 square feet, what pressure is required to meet the minimum flow rate? To find the answer, we first multiply 200 by 0.1 to determine the required flow rate, which gives us 20 gallons per minute. Next, we divide 20 by the k-factor of 5.6 and square the result. 12.75 psi is the pressure needed to meet the required flow rate. This pressure ensures the sprinkler delivers the required flow rate under the given conditions. Although we've discussed the k-factor of individual sprinklers, it's important to know that the same concept can be applied to a section of the system. In other words, whenever we know the flow rate and pressure at a certain point, we can calculate the equivalent k-factor for the downstream portion of the system. We can apply this concept to solve relatively complex problems and even simplify the hydraulic calculation process. For example, the flow rate of 70 GPM at 30 PSI is calculated at the exact point where the right outlet of the T connects to the branch line serving the three sprinklers shown. Likewise, the flow rate of 20 gallons per minute at 15 pounds per square inch is calculated at the left outlet of the T, which supplies the single sprinkler. With these calculated flow rates, we can be confident that each sprinkler meets the minimum density required by NFPA 13. The question now is, what flow rate and pressure are required at the inlet of the T to supply all four sprinklers with their necessary demand? It's worth noting that to keep this section focused and straightforward, we'll ignore minor losses in the T-fitting. In situations where the outlets of a T require different flow rates and pressures, determining the required pressure at the inlet is simple. It should match the higher of the two outlet pressures, which in this case is 30 PSI. By supplying 30 PSI at the inlet of the T, we can be confident that the three sprinklers on the right side will discharge the required 70 GPM. But what about the single sprinkler on the left side? It only needs 20 GPM at 15 PSI, yet we're supplying 30 PSI at the inlet. This means the actual flow through that sprinkler will be higher than 20 gallons per minute. To find the actual flow rate of the sprinkler, we'll apply the concept of the equivalent k-factor. As mentioned earlier, we can calculate the equivalent k-factor for a section of the system when both flow rate and pressure are known. For the section on the left side of the T, which includes a single sprinkler and its connecting pipe, we know the flow is 20 GPM and the pressure is 15 PSI. Using the formula, we divide 20 by the square root of 15, which results in an equivalent k factor of approximately 5.16. Now that we've determined the equivalent k factor of that section, and we're supplying 30 psi at the T inlet, the actual flow rate of the single sprinkler will be approximately 26.3 gallons per minute. This means the sprinkler will discharge more than the originally required 20 gallons per minute due to the higher supplied pressure. Therefore, the total required flow rate at the inlet of the T can be calculated by adding 70 and 26.3, which gives us 96.3 gallons per minute.
In this part of the video, we'll explore how the concept of equivalent K factor can simplify hydraulic calculations and save valuable time, all through an example. As shown in this figure, the room is protected by 27 quick response standard spray sprinklers with a K factor of 5.6. All sprinklers are installed directly onto fittings, without any additional piping between the sprinkler and the branch line. The branch lines are identical in both size and length, and the cross main is 2 inches in diameter. The design area includes 7 sprinklers. While the goal of this example isn't to explain the hydraulic calculation process, it's worth briefly noting that the process begins at the most remote sprinkler, in this case sprinkler 101. For this sprinkler, we can calculate the flow rate by multiplying its coverage area by the required density. Once we have the flow rate, the pressure can be determined by dividing the flow rate by the K factor, then squaring the result. Now that we've calculated the flow rate and pressure for sprinkler 101, we can move on to sprinkler 102. The pressure loss in the pipe between these two sprinklers can be determined using the Hazen-Williams formula. Once we know that loss, we can find the pressure at sprinkler 102, and from there, calculate its flow rate using the K factor and the square root of the pressure. We continue this step-by-step -step process to calculate the pressure and flow rate at sprinkler 103. After that, we determine the pressure at node A, which represents the intersection between the most remote branch line and the cross main. Now that we've calculated the pressure at node A, we can determine the equivalent K factor of the most remote branch line by dividing its total flow rate by the square root of the pressure at that point. In the next step, we calculate the pressure at node B. Now we need to answer an important question. How much flow will be discharged from sprinklers 104, 105, and 106, located on the second most remote branch line? Rather than starting the calculation from sprinkler 104, we simplify the process by using the concept of equivalent K factor. Since the second most remote branch line is identical to the most remote one, in terms of pipe size and length, sprinkler count, K factor, and even the number of sprinklers in the design area, we can apply the same equivalent K factor. With the pressure at node B known, we can easily calculate the total flow rate for this branch line. We continue the calculation and determine the pressure at node C. Now, another question arises. To calculate the flow rate for sprinkler 107, can we use the equivalent K factor from the most remote branch line? The answer is no. Although the third most remote branch line is similar to the others in terms of pipe size, length, and sprinkler type, the number of sprinklers in the design area is different. In this case, only one sprinkler falls within the design area, whereas the most remote and second most remote branch lines each had three. In these cases, several methods can be used, including trial and error, the equivalent K-factor approach, and numerical solutions. In this video, we'll focus on the equivalent K-factor method. If you're interested in exploring the other two techniques, you can refer to Annex A of the article titled Optimizing Fire Sprinkler System Demand, available at nsvsoft.net. In the equivalent K-factor method, we begin by selecting an arbitrary flow rate for sprinkler 107 and calculating its corresponding pressure. Next, we determine the pressure at node C based on that flow rate and use it to compute the equivalent K factor for the piping network between sprinkler 107 and node C. Since the pressure at node C is already known, we can then calculate the actual flow rate through this section of piping, which ultimately gives us the discharge from sprinkler 107. We'll explore this topic in more detail in the next video, where we review the hydraulic calculation process for fire sprinkler systems. In hydraulic calculations for fire sprinkler systems, when the flow rate is known, increasing the K factor reduces the pressure required to achieve that flow rate. For example, in an extra hazard occupancy group 2, 
where the table 192311 requires a minimum density of 0.4 gallons per minute per square foot if we assume a pendant standard spray sprinkler covering 100 square feet. The minimum required flow rate will be 40 gallons per minute. Using a sprinkler with a K factor of 5.6, the required pressure would be approximately 51 pounds per square inch. With a K factor of 8.0, the pressure drops to 25 psi, and with a K11.2, it further reduces to about 12.76 psi. This example demonstrates that increasing the K factor of sprinklers can help reduce the required pressure, which is especially useful in situations where the available water supply cannot provide sufficient pressure for the system. It's important to note that increasing the K factor isn't always beneficial. In certain scenarios, decreasing the K factor can actually improve hydraulic performance and reduce system demand. For example, in an ordinary hazard group, one occupancy, where a minimum density of 0.15 gallons per minute per square foot is required, if a pendant standard spray sprinkler covers 100 square feet, the minimum required flow rate would be 15 gallons per minute. Let's calculate the required pressure using different K factors. With a K factor of 5.6, the pressure needed is approximately 7.17 psi. With K equals 8, the required pressure drops to around 3.52. And with K equals 11.2, it further reduces to about 1.79 psi. Although increasing the K factor reduces the required pressure, a critical limitation arises. NFPA 13 mandates a minimum pressure of 7 psi behind the sprinkler. If the pressure falls below this threshold, the cap or seal may not fully detach after the heat-sensitive bulb breaks. Another concern is that even if the cap is removed, pressures below 7 psi may result in poor discharge patterns and ineffective sprinkler performance. Therefore, in our example, even though the calculated pressures for K8 and 11.2 are lower, they shall be increased to meet the minimum requirement of 7 psi. This results in discharging more flow than the standard requires, ultimately increasing the system's hydraulic demand. Another scenario where decreasing the K-factor can be beneficial is when sprinklers cover relatively small areas. For example, assume a pendant standard spray sprinkler is installed at the center of a 10 by 7 foot room. The coverage area for this sprinkler would be 70 square feet. If the room falls under a light hazard occupancy, where a minimum density of 0.1 gallons per minute per square foot is required, the total flow rate needed would be just 7 gallons per minute. If we use a K5.6 sprinkler and apply the minimum acceptable pressure of 7 psi, the resulting flow rate will be approximately 14.8 gallons per minute, more than twice the required amount. By considering section 944 and selecting a K2.8 sprinkler, the flow rate at 7 psi would be approximately 7.4 gallons per minute, just slightly above the required flow rate, making it a much more efficient choice for this scenario. To determine the optimal K factor, it can be calculated based on the required flow rate and the minimum acceptable pressure. The next step is to select the nearest smaller standard K factor value according to Table 7221. For example, if a standard spray sprinkler requires a discharge of 24 gallons per minute, the calculated K factor would be 9.1. Within the acceptable K factor range, this value falls between K8.0 and K11.2. Therefore, K8.0 should be selected as the optimal K factor. As we reviewed in this video, selecting the right K factor is crucial. Sometimes increasing it helps, other times decreasing is better. Designers must evaluate system parameters to reduce hydraulic demand and ultimately lower the system's overall cost.